Hello, hello, hello. Um, I am super excited uh, to be trying something new today. I am using a program called BeLive.TV. It was suggested to me by our group mate, Kat Patterson. So I am going to guess that there is going to be a little bit of a delay because, hey, Kelly, uh, because there, um, it's a third party. So I'm guessing there's going to be a little bit of delay. No big deal. Um, hey, Kelly, how's it going? So the reason I wanted to do this uh, software program is because there's a lot of things I'm going to be talking about today that you're going to want to take notes on. And the last time I did a live where I was like, here are your steps, I think it was like the playbook funnel. You know, the the camera was backwards. So as I was holding up, you know, it appeared backwards and I had to retype everything. So with this uh, program be live TV I can actually put notes up on the screen as I'm broadcasting which is going to be super helpful for you guys so um, and again if you saw my quick little video yesterday um, I'm going to be offering something to the people that are watching live today so you're going to want to stick around till the end, and I'm going to take down this video and cut out the offer at the end um, because it's just for people watching live. Uh, so I think without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. Let me make sure um, I'm looking at, okay, awesome. Let's get to it. So today is all about opt-ins. Hopefully you know what an opt-in is. It could also be called a lead magnet. Essentially, it's a freebie that you are giving your audience in exchange for their email address. So it can be a content upgrade. Um, there's lots of different terms that people talk about when you talk about opt-ins. So they're essentially used to add value to whatever content you are asking people to come and check out um, that they think is worth giving you their email address for. So this Facebook Live Office Hours is not about how to create opt-ins because there's a bajillion resources out there for like how to create an infographic on Canva, you know, all this kind of stuff. That's all fine and good and might give you some ideas, but what it doesn't tell you, what they don't tell you is how to set up the back end of this process so that you are capturing, targeting, segmenting people in the best way possible. So it's not just they give you your their email address and then, then what? This is the then what. So... Um, just super quick, the, um, you know, some really common added value opt-ins, whatever it is, would be lists like the top five or five essential or key items or whatever it is. Um, Kelly, for you with oils, it would be like, you know, the most popular five oils for, um, you know, in an office or at home or your bedroom or, you know, whatever it is, there's all sorts of kind of fun, uh, informative and valuable things that you can create a PDF or an infographic um, that you make as part of other content like a blog or a video or whatever. So again, not really going to get into like a ton of ideas. Um, uh, one of the things Kelly, oh, you're sweet. Um, one of the things that I has been a huge game changer for me, and this again kind of goes back to your back end systems. I was able to look at my analytics and site traffic and discovered that a blog that I wrote way back in 2015 called The Nine Things Your Social Media Manager Should Be Doing. I posted, I put that on Pinterest and I ran a Pinterest ad for like two weeks, almost two years ago. It is my highest traffic piece of popular content that I get traffic every day to that blog, mostly from Pinterest. 
So realizing that this was high value, people were loving it, clicking on it, reading it, what I did is I turned that blog into an ebook and stepped back the actual published blog on my site to really be more of an overview and table of contents and then offered the free ebook that used to be the entirety of the blog post as a free ebook. Um, in exchange for email addresses. I would not do this for every blog. I did this because this is like way far above and beyond my most popular blog. I get anywhere from five to eight email signups a day from that signup. So just to kind of get your wheels turning and all of that. Um, so the second point of all of this is, okay, well, why do you need to set up a system for your opt-ins? Um, after you actually create the opt-ins, setting up a system for how you're going to take advantage of that information that people are, are giving to you is essential to, um, you know, maximizing, obviously, that information, but putting a system behind it makes it take much less time. So I've got an entire system that I use every time I do a content upgrade or freebie that I've got the entire thing down from email sequence to tag to thank you page to lead box to all of this stuff, I can do it in less than an hour because I literally have a checklist of do this, click here, save this, go here. Like it is fine-tuned, nitty-gritty mapped out. So why should you be concerned about this integrating with your email list? Well, people are giving you their email your email list, as everybody kind of knows, is really where the magic happens with your audience. Your hope is that your email list is filled with people that want to know more about you, find your service and your products or whatever it is that you're selling very valuable, and it's a chance for you to get to know them better, um, to build that know, like, and trust factor, and they've already gotten past the threshold of they've shown interest in you and what you're doing by giving you their email address. So they've kind of passed that first tier of the sales funnel. So what happens ideally is when somebody signs up for your list, you put them into a welcoming sequence. And the purpose of an email sequence or an email series, which is where, and you've all experienced this, you get a series of emails over the course of like a few days or a few weeks kind of introducing you to what this person is all about. Again, it's your know, like, and trust. It's um, here's what you can expect from being on my list. Here's some more added value. Um, all of this stuff has to happen to continue to warm up your leads for when you finally get to that point where you want to ask, right? Okay, so I hope that I have explained everything really well as far as what an opt-in is, couple ideas, how you can, you know, take advantage of it, and the purpose of doing this and having a system. So I'm going to jump in to, um, let's see if this works here. Hey, look at that. How awesome is that? Okay, so um, I hope you have your pens out because um, I will leave these up so you can read them. I'm wondering why it's in orange. I wonder if I can change that. I am so all about like my brand colors and branding guidelines. So um, that's funny. I'll have to check that out later. So the essential step for your opt-ins. I realize that not everybody uses ConvertKit or lead pages or whatever. The only thing that you absolutely must have is an email marketing provider that lets you set up sign up forms, sequences, and either segmenting or tagging. Um, that's really, I mean, I use a bunch of other tools because they offer um, a, a whole lot of other options that I really like. But in order to take advantage of this system and set it up properly, that's really all you need is an email marketing system, whatever it is, that allows you to set up forms, tag and sequence, or um, tag and segment, and automatically send a sequence to people that sign up. So you've created your form. It's beautiful. You know, people are going to love it. You're going to attach it to a blog. That's about something relating to this content upgrade. So um, before you do anything else, the very first step, number one, I love how this works. Okay. 
um, create a tag in your email system. A tag is where um, someone signs up on a particular form uh, and it tags them with, okay, for example, I have nine things your social media manager should be doing. Anybody that signs into that form is going to be tagged with nine things your social media manager should be doing opt-in. So I know that that's how they got on my list. Okay, first step in making sure you capture the information you need. Tag anybody, set up a tag in your email. The next thing you are going to do is connect the tag to an email sequence. So an email sequence can be as simple as one or two emails. It could be a series. If you have lots and lots of content and things to offer, it can be a series of emails over the course of several weeks. That's kind of up to you as far as how it fits in. But basically, you want to address people specifically to why they're there. So I have an outline of um, a sequence that I use for most of my opt-ins that I change, um, you know, talking about why they signed up. So I would say, you know, thank you so much for downloading nine things your social media manager should be doing. Here's another blog that relates to that. Um, here's some fun facts about me. Here's what you can expect. You know, I'll see you soon. The next email that comes out, you know, a day or two later is going to be, you know, hey, just so you know, this is my, you know, most popular blog, or this is something that everybody seems to be loving right now, you know, and I'm giving more value and I'm, I'm training them to get to know my brand voice and open my emails and all that kind of stuff. Oh, and hey, by the way, Come check out my Facebook group. It's free. We have a lot of fun in there. I do office hours, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, then the third one might be, you know, you're going to be put on my newsletter list at this point. Thank you so much. Love having you, you know, more value, whatever it is. So it's not like a hard sell sequence. It is a welcome to my tribe sequence. Um, so you want to make sure that there's an automation in your email system for when somebody is tagged with your opt-in form that they automatically get put into that sequence. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to manually do anything. It's all set to go. The next thing that people need to do, that you need to do, is customize your confirmation. So we have all seen from MailChimp, ConvertKit, you know, a couple other ones that are, are um, really popular right now, Active Campaign. Um, usually when you opt into something, you are going to have to confirm your subscription in some way that whole double opt-in with the laws, privacy laws, all of that. Um, and most people miss this step. They just leave it the generic like default and it says, hey, thanks, confirm your subscription here, you know, whatever. This is an opportunity for you to put your brand voice out there, for you to be a little more specific about your messaging, um, and to let them know where else they can find you. So my confirmation email might say, hey, Rockstar, thanks so much for signing up for nine things your social media manager should be doing. Make sure you click the confirmation here. Uh, just so you know, I do open office hours every week in my group. If you have any questions about social media, that's the place to ask. Um, and super simple, short and sweet, but don't miss the opportunity to customize those automatic emails that go out when somebody signs up for your email list. Um, next thing. The form. This might have gone, like you could do this um, further up towards the tag, um, but you've got to have a place for people to sign up, right? Um, I use lead boxes. Uh, Amanda, hey, legally acquired. Uh, exactly, exactly. Like it's there, it has to be done. So many people miss this step. And sometimes, to be honest, like even though I have it on my checklist, um, I don't realize that I've missed it because there's so many things to click and do. I don't realize till I've, I've missed it until I test the sequence for myself and I get that confirmation. I go, oh, shit, I need to go back and, and change that up and make it me. So uh, the fourth, fourth thing is to create a form that you're going to embed on your site or hook it up to the lead pages. I use lead boxes, which is... Um, 
Just give it a second, Amanda, or refresh your browser. Uh, is it frozen for anybody else? Hello, hello, hello. Well, there might be some delay. I'm just going to keep rolling with it. So um, it's okay here. Yeah. Um, so, great. Lost my turn of thought. Um, form. You have to have a place for people to actually uh, embed their, uh, I'm sorry, sign up with their email address for whatever it is. Again, I use lead boxes. Um, however, I could create a form from my email provider. I use ConvertKit and embed that right into my blog. There's several other ways you can do it. So once I have that form that I've customized for um, you know, sign up here, get the free ebook, you know, whatever it is. I would not ask for any other information besides their first name and their email. Don't bother with anything else. It creates a higher barrier to entry and people just don't do that. Sometimes I don't even ask for their name. I just ask for their email. Um, and uh, then you're going to want to integrate that with your tag and your sequence. So literally how I, how I have this worked out in... Um, ConvertKit is when someone puts their email address into a form, it triggers an automation to tag them with um, the opt-in that is, is linked to that form. And then it triggers the sequence that I have set up. So you kind of reverse engineer how you want people to go through. Um, but these are the back end things that make it easy to do because they're automated and it lets you capture that information. I mean, can you imagine if you had a list of a thousand people and you have no idea how they got there? This way you can see, you know what, they opted in. Say they opted in for the nine things your social media manager should be doing. And I come out with a course on how to become a social media manager. You better believe I want to know exactly who signed up for that opt-in so that I can talk to them and say, hey, you might be interested in this. So... Um, and then the last thing you want to do as far as the steps for all of this is creating a thank you page. So again, if you're just using your email system, a lot of times they will um, send out an automated thank you or redirect to some generic page, whatever it is. And again, this is a huge opportunity to put your brand voice and your brand out there. Again, just like the confirmation page. On all of, I use lead pages for my thank you pages. And every single one of them, I say, thank you so much. Check your email for your download. Here's what you do next. Join my group, send me a tweet, and I use click to tweet, so it tags me and it has the proper hashtags. Um, send me a tweet to let me know you've joined. Um, and, you know, follow me on these other social media profiles or sign up for my free social media email course, you know, whatever it is. So it, again, is leading them into this natural progression of the value that you provide and kind of how you want to funnel them through um, being part of your tribe. So the thank you page should be uh, probably more extensive than that super short confirmation email. Um, because you really want, you don't want it to just be, hey, thanks, see you later. Like you want it to be, thank you so much. Here's all these other ways we can connect. So hopefully you guys have written all of that down, essential steps for your opt-in, that kind of back-end, you know, system and sequence. And um, now... I'm going to go through, this is so funny because normally with Facebook Lives, I'm much more just kind of conversational because I know what I want to talk about, but this, I really want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the goods. So I'm making sure to refer to my notes and it doesn't feel as natural as like it normally is, but that's cool. I know you guys understand, you know me. So the next part of all of this are the key elements of those steps that you need to keep in mind as you're going through them. And let's dive in. So number one, deliver your opt-in right away. There is nothing worse than when you sign up for something and there's like two or three, I've seen sometimes even four emails that come around before you can figure out how to download it and it's not clear and you have to do the confirmation and then you get a welcome email and then you get it like, make sure 
however you're setting up this opt-in, whatever system you use to deliver it, that it's being delivered right away and it's easy. Um, people have to be spoon fed and it's not because, you know, people are dumb or anything like that. That's not, that's not the case. It's that we are so overloaded with content and our attention spans have reduced to the point of being goldfish that if you don't make it easy, they're on to the next. So make sure that the opt-in you deliver them um, is easy and it's done right away. I touched on this a little bit before, but I want to make sure that this hits home. The sequence that you uh, set them up with for, that's me, that's funny. Um, the sequence that you set them up with should be welcoming, informative, and give value. This is not the time to say, hey, did you know you can buy this from me? Please don't do that. Um, this should be thank you, gratitude, here's more value. Oh, and hey, here's some more value. And let me know what you think and here's how else you can connect with me. Um, and welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and that is not to be fake or try and manipulate or anything. Like, if you're in a service-based business and you are, oh, I can see that it's frozen again. Mm. Hey, hold on. Do, do, do. I see it spinning on Facebook as I'm watching myself live, but I've got Facebook out of the corner of my eye. Um we're just, I'm just going to roll with it and hope it catches up. Okay. So, um, yeah, you want to provide a lot of value, not frozen here. That's so interesting. I wonder why. Um, Kelly, maybe you just, you just have the best internet around. That, that must be it. Hold on one sec. So later down the line, as you know, you do your products and you start offering things or you want to introduce them to your offers, you know, whatever it is. Once they're in your newsletter list, like your regular newsletter list, or you've got a launch coming up or whatever it is, you know, then it's okay to kind of do the relatable story, provide some value, um, got rid of Comcast. I know, Kelly, mm -hmm. and I'm right down the street from you. So yeah, I get it. Um, and then ask for the sale. But the welcoming series for onboarding people onto your list should not be really anything but welcoming, informative, and providing more value and telling them how they can continue to connect with you. Okay. I think that's pretty clear. Um, yeah. And again, I already touched on this too, but it bears repeating because this is super important. Your thank you page should invite more engagement. Not selling anything like that. But like I, you know, my Twitter is pretty much automated at this point. But the reason I still use it is because I ask people to tweet at me and let me know they've joined either my Rockstar Resources library or my free course or whatever it is. And I get a notification from Twitter and then I can connect with that person individually and say, hey, thanks so much for joining. I'm glad you're here. I send them a funny gif, you know, whatever it is. Um, so it's another opportunity to connect and build a relationship with a potential client and someone who is on my list. So um, again, your thank you page is an opportunity for um, you to invite more engagement and let people know um, where else they can find you and connect with you. So, and then the last thing, do, 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 scroll down here is you want to make sure when someone is done with that welcoming sequence, mine are typically like two to three emails over the course of, you know, uh, usually about three days. Once they're done with the sequence, then I move them into my regular newsletter list because I don't want people um, that are opting in and as part of a series to also be bombarded with a newsletter, even though I only send a newsletter once every two weeks, because um, I don't want them to be overwhelmed with stuff, right? I want my newsletter list to be full of people that have already gone through my sequences. So make sure you are adding an automation with your um, your uh, email sequ your email provider 
whether it's MailChimp or ConvertKit, that when they finish a sequence, they get put into a general newsletter list. Cool? And then the last thing, which is uh, much more advanced and has to do um, with some heavy, more heavy hitter programs, which is why I kind of pay for the better programs, is you really want to make sure that you are putting your Facebook pixel and Pinterest conversion tag in these forms. The reason is that if you choose to do paid advertising in the future, whether it's Facebook ads or promoted pins, um, you're going to want that information about people getting to your forms and going through your sequences in order to retarget them. It's much better to retarget people that have shown interest in a particular thing than it is to just guess at targeting and hope you're finding the right people, right? So that's a much more advanced thing. That's like a whole course in and of itself um, that obviously I don't have time to teach you today and is not really um, on point with subject matter. But if you know how to or you need to research how to, don't forget your pixels. Um, again, it, Facebook uses the term pixels. Per, uh, Pinterest uses conversion tags. I use pixels as like a generic term for the tracking code um, for those social media networks that allow you to do paid advertising so that you can track what's going on with your opt-ins and retarget people with ads. So um, that is it for our regular broadcast. I am going to um, pause here because when I'm done with this, I'm going to take it down edit the end of this out and um, uh, it's only going to be available right now. So if you have not guessed, I'm putting together like a short mini course masterclass on exactly how to do this. And what it's going to be, um, I'm calling it opt-in awesomeness because that's just what came to me. Um, but I am going to show you step by step the uh, screen share video checklist and multiple checklists and um, PDFs exactly my process, my checklist, everything that I go through that helps me set up this entire system start to finish in less than an hour. So it is literally going to be um, you know, starting with the tag and the form, and then I go over to lead boxes, and then I go back to convert kit and change this email. And then I do, I mean, and it literally, it can get so confusing going back and forth with different programs and what to do where and not forgetting a step. And I am going to record the entire process of me going through step by step by step exactly how to do this, which is going to be accompanied by um, a checklist you can print out as you are going through it for yourself and any other information that's going to go along with it that will help you. Um, and the um, screen share is going to be specifically for ConvertKit and lead pages and how that integrates. However, I understand that not everybody uses ConvertKit and um, lead pages. So I'm going to provide you with the principles and exactly what you need to do um, if you don't use those programs. Again, what you need to have is an email marketing system that allows you to do automations, sequences, tagging, and um, a form you can embed on your site. So I got you covered, even if you don't have ConvertKit and lead pages. So that's the deal. And the regular price, once this is launched in a few weeks, is going to be $57. Talk about a steal. But for those of you today that are here live, and it looks like there's five of you here live, um, aren't you lucky? I...